color and shape inherently one or distinct? If shape such as length and so forth is inherently distinct from color, how can a visual consciousness take shape as its object of apprehension? It follows that it cannot because shape is an entity distinct from color. Alternatively, if they are not distinct but inherently one, why does touch not apprehend color in the dark just as it apprehends shape? It follows that it should because they are one. Assertion, the visible form source. Exists because the four great elements which are causal forms exist. Answer, only the resultant form is visible but the form's causes such as the earth element are not seen. Since causal form is imputed in dependence upon resultant form, they cannot be inherently different. If they are inherently one, they must be one. In that case why does just visual consciousness itself not apprehend both the causal and resultant forms? It follows that it should because they are one. Earth is seen as firm and stable and furthermore is apprehended by tactile consciousness. Thus only that which is tangible is referred to as earth. Therefore since visible forms are objects apprehended by visual consciousness and the four elements are objects apprehended by tactile consciousness, they are different. If one accepts them as truly existent, they are unrelated. It would thereby follow that visible form is causeless. By Jessica's assertion, a pot is not a visible object by way of its own entity but neither is it not a visible object, since it is directly perceptible by virtue of possessing visibility, a separate generality. Answer, this too is unacceptable. Has the pot come into existence as something visible through its own causes or not? In the first case it would follow that an association with the separate generality of visibility is of no use in making the pot directly perceptible, because it has come into existence as something visible through its own causes. For this reason the generality of visibility is not produced in relation to the pot. Further, a pot that has no connection with visibility and is not something visible lacks any inherently established entity of existence. Therefore the pot could not be either actually or imputedly directly perceptible as you contend. Assertion, because sense organs exist such as the eyes, which are instruments of perception directly perceptible objects such as visible form exist. Answer, regarding the subject, the eye organ, since the eye perceives visual stimuli while other senses do not, it does not perceive visible form by way of its own entity, for like the nose sense organ it is an outcome of the elements. A demonstration of the valid reasons which invalidate the entailment is given below. Objection, if the eye and so forth do not exist it contradicts explanations concerning the maturation of actions. Answer, but even we do not refute that. Question, why is that not refuted? Answer, we refute that things exist by way of their own entity, but far from refuting the existence of all that is dependent arising, we affirm it in our own system. Although it cannot sustain investigation by the reasoning which analyzes suchness and though it is not established by way of its own entity, it is undeniable that the eye sees visible form and does not hear sound. Thus recognizing that the maturation of actions is inconceivable, one should accept it without applying analysis by reasoning. Certainly therefore the subduer said that the fruition of actions is inconceivable. Sutra says, assertion, the I and so forth, are inherently existent because one experiences consciousness, their effect. Answer, a visual consciousness does not exist before looking at a form, for prior to that the conditions which produce it are incomplete. Alternatively if it exists after looking at the form, it follows that the I consciousness is of no use in looking at the form, because looking takes place before it exists. As a third possibility one might think that that which looks in consciousness are simultaneous. It would then follow that the instrument of looking would be of no use in the production of that visual consciousness because the two would exist simultaneously and would be unrelated. Assertion, the eye is the instrument of looking. Answer, when the eye looks at a form, does it look after traveling to the object or without doing so? In the first case, if when the eye looked at a form there were motion of traveling toward the object, it should take longer to see distant objects. If the eye perceived through contact, why would the eye ointment and spatula, which are extremely close, and very distant forms not be equally clear? It follows that they would be because of being perceived through contact. If the eye traveled to the form after seeing it, its movement would be of no benefit, for though it does so to view the form, that form has already been seen. 
Alternatively, if it approached without CING the form which it intended to view, it would be false to say it had definitely been seen, for it approaches what is to be viewed without seeing it, like a blind man. To avoid these errors one might assert that it perceives form by way of its own entity without traveling. In that case the eye which stays here would see all of these phenomena, the close and distant, as well as the obscured and unobscured. For an eye which does not approach the object there should be no difference between close or distant, obscured or unobscured objects. Just as the fragrance of the magnolia or blue lotus is first found at its source and afterwards, through contact, on a sesame seed and so forth, it is the way of all things that their nature first appears in themselves. Since it cannot relinquish its nature even in relation to itself, if it is an instrument of looking by way of its own entity, why does the eye not perceive itself? It follows that it should since the eye organ even with the eye as its object cannot give up its nature as an instrument of looking. Yet valid cognition negates that the eye perceives itself. Thus the subject, the eye, is not an instrument of looking at form by way of its own entity, because it does not look at itself. Assertion the eye alone does not have the ability to view form. The form is seen in dependence upon a combination of three factors. Answer, since the eye is matter it is not conscious of the object. Consciousness is not that which looks at the object. The form, the objective condition, is neither that which looks nor consciousness. Can form be seen by way of its own entity through a combination of these three factors? It follows.